Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to focus on why React is different than the other frameworks and libraries out there. Before we write any code, we should really understand why we want to use React. What is the benefit it offers, and why is it so different? React is a view library, so it's not a full MVC framework, it's just the V in MVC. It's one of the newer libraries in the front-end space, and it's a product of Facebook R&D. So if you ever wonder if this can be used in production, just know that Facebook uses it and it essentially powers the Instagram web client. So it's pretty safe to say that you can use it in production for your app. Why would we want to use React though? What makes it different from all the other frameworks out there? Is it just syntax or does it really do something different? The biggest reason why React stands out amongst the rest is due to the way that it manages state. And this is mostly to say that it doesn't really manage state. To really understand that, let's have a history lesson. 15, 20 years ago, web development was a lot more simple. The user would enter a URL. That would hit a web server. The web server would generate HTML and then send it down to the browser. The browser was just responsible for rendering the HTML. Now, if the user wanted to interact with the site, this would involve a post back to the server, which would deliver new HTML to be re-rendered. While this process was slow, it was very simple. Every time we wanted something to change, we could just easily re-render the page. This process became a much more complicated with the advent of Ajax. When the XML HTTP request hit the scene, we could now send out-of-band HTTP requests to update just fragments of the page. And this was a heck of a lot faster than posting back for every change. And XHR gave way to the single page apps that we write today. Now we could load one page and update it with small request and have the browser do all the heavy lifting. And this is the core philosophy behind frameworks like Angular and Ember. This new single page approach is a lot faster, but it also brings a lot more complexity to the client side. We lose the ability to re-render the entire page. We have to know which parts of the page to update. And this is all based off of our application state. Let's take a look at this app as an example of managing state. It's just a to-do list. Every time we add a new to-do, it'll append to the list. That's one behavior that'll make our state more complicated. We'll also have to be able to complete to-do items. With a single page application, all of these actions directly mutate our state. We can't re-render the entire list because it's too inefficient. The bottleneck for performance is usually the DOM. So we wanna operate on it as little as possible. It would be a lot easier if we could just re-render our application and not have to deal with the slow DOM. Well, with React, we can. But the DOM is slow, so how does this work well? Well, React has a JavaScript implementation of the DOM called the virtual DOM. This is completely separate from the browser's implementation. Every time state is changed, React creates a virtual DOM tree. It diffs from the current one and then re-renders only the difference to the real DOM. This means we get the benefit of re-rendering off state changes without having to deal with the slow performance. React deals with representing views with components rather than templates. In modern frameworks and libraries, we use templates to structure our markup based upon our application state. In this case, we're generating a list of items using an Angular directive. Our state is this array of items. React sees a problem here. Templating is a domain-specific language. It's not natively available in HTML or JavaScript. Angular here has created an abstraction that gives us this functionality. If Angular doesn't provide the functionality we need, we'll have to go out and create it ourselves, which increases the complexity of our application. React argues that the better way to do this is with components. And these components are just JavaScript. React provides us with a set of functions that represent HTML nodes. Using these nodes, we can build our own custom components. Since this is all JavaScript, we don't lose out on any of the expressivity of the language. However, there's one drawback to this approach. We lose out on the visual representation of our view. In templating, it was easy to see how our view would be rendered, because its structure is similar to the end result. This is why React created JSX. JSX is the syntax that React uses to represent the view, and it's just sugar that renders out to these functions but there are a couple tricks we need to know to get it to work. In the next lesson, we'll make our first component using JSX.